I have something in my hand. It is today's mystery object. Yes, today we are going to have a mystery object. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> How nice to see you here. And I hope you are feeling good today. Yes, we have made it all the way to another day of existence. Isn't it great? Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, we are here to get together. Are we together? I hope so. On day number 23 of 28 days of February. How are you today? Ole! I was so close to getting that right. I was so close to making my introduction without making any mistakes but sadly no I couldn't do it unfortunately I failed again hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I hope you are feeling happy because we are here again completely live as live as it's possible to be to be honest with you live now on YouTube yes it is the best kept secret on YouTube somewhere in California there is a little flashing blue light and that is my channel however <laughs> that little blue light is not safe because YouTube algorithms like to come along and interfere with that little blue light unfortunately for those wondering what this is well join the club because I have no idea here we go yes my name is Duncan I talk about the English language I've been doing this for ever such a long time how long have I been doing it a very long time I just said <laughs> nearly 15 years I can't believe it sometimes I wake up in the morning sweaty and uncomfortable and all of my body aches but there is one thing that always puts a smile on my face and that is the fact that I am a YouTuber <laughs> what does it feel like to be a YouTuber it doesn't really feel like anything to be honest it feels like nothing when you wake up in the morning I just think here we go again it's another day of this oh and also I will be on YouTube so in fact my day is not as bad as it could be because I'm here with you right now yes we have made it all the way to the second day of the week it's so nice to see you here again yes it's Tuesday <laughs> OK, that went on slightly longer than it should have. I'm very sorry about that. We are together. It's a Tuesday. I hope your Tuesday is going well. Today we are talking about insects. They can be very annoying. Have you noticed how annoying insects can be, especially during the summer months? Here in the UK, we have lots of insects and they are very annoying uh, during the summertime. We're talking about that. Also, some insect idioms coming up later on. We also have the mystery object. Sometimes I like to show you something, something <laughs> unusual, maybe something that has a very strange shape or colour or smell. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you my mystery object and all you have to do is guess what it is. So I will be showing you that very soon. Hello to the live chat. I suppose I should say hello to you. Oh, oh, 
we have some very interesting things happening on the live chat who was first oh I see very interesting Unicarina congratulations to you you are first on today's live chat is it your first time is it the first time that you've ever been first on the live chat can I say congratulations and a super duper big welcome once again Vitas I am so sorry I'm so sorry Vitas I'm sorry I must apologize because you are second today you are in second place and as we all know in this world you don't get anything for being in second place only the winners succeed you see that wasn't me that said that that was mr dragon yes you see hello mr dragon nice to see you here hello everyone nice to see you here today on the live stream i am the new co-presenter are you enjoying today's live stream i really hope you are yes i hope so as well <laughs> what what was that mr duncan <laughs> you are playing with puppets like a five-year-old yeah we will be spotting the white van in a moment we also have florence sally oh hello sally 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 she's standing in the alley waiting to be taken home by her boyfriend hello sally nice to see you here as well also grace chin soren oh we also have lewis mendez is here today also we have tomek hello tomek it's nice to see you here during the week yes it's very nice to see tomek here today welcome tomek welcome nice to see you here during the week oh, i'm sure that's not go going to get annoying is it i'm not annoying who said that no one well not yet anyway hello also to fatty zito also donna and everyone else as well sam says i suppose i should say hello to mr dragon as well oh look at that i have a fan already hello everyone i hope you are having a good tuesday it's tuesday everyone <laughs> traditionally tuesday is the second day of the week i remember years ago i used to get my my grandmother's pension from the post office every tuesday <laughs> fascinating thanks for joining me to get thanks for joining me again today nice to see you as well talking about insects we are going to play spot the white van would you like to play spot the white van we are going to look outside all you have to do is look very closely very carefully and we have to see if there is a white van driving past now yesterday we did have a lot of success with our white vans because lots and lots of white vans were on the road yesterday so let's have a look now at the view outside it's not too bad today it's it's quite a nice day today thank you mr dragon <laughs> are we going to see some white fans well we, we will have to wait and see mr dragon <laughs> what <laughs> where are the white vans come on white vans i saw lots of white vans this morning driving up and down the road and now there are none 
I can only assume that <laughs> many of the white vans are now having their lunch break I think that might be the reason why in fact if you notice the road is very quiet oh okay then what's that see I think that was a bus so I suppose that could be a van but I don't think it is you see I think that was a bus that was a small bus I don't think that was a van <laughs> we will wait for a few more moments hopefully there will be a white van going by and then we can carry on we can carry on with today's live stream okay Mr Duncan that's a good idea I'm starting to think that maybe I have completely lost my mind I'm not sure maybe that's what happens when you come on YouTube every day of the month <laughs> you you start to go a little crazy oh Mr Duncan I just saw a white van you did yes I saw it as well did anyone else see the white van there it is it's gone it's now driving towards Shrewsbury and also in the distance as well did you see that in the distance there is also a white van so I think that might be two white vans that we've seen today so I must admit <laughs> I am feeling rather pleased rather happy that now we have not one but two white vans officially they have been spotted oh and there is another uh, what was that was that a van I don't think that was a van was it was that a van I'm not sure oh lots of lorries lots of birds lots of pigeons <laughs> okay that's enough we have seen the white van and there is another one that's a big one that looks like a delivery van anyway we've done it we've made it And there is another one. Did you see that? There was another white van. Oh, Mr. Duncan, there are many white vans on the road today. I have seen five, five white vans. Well, aren't you clever? Yes, yes, I'm very clever, actually. Thank you for asking. <sighs> Yes, I think so. I think I've completely lost my mind today. Here we go then. We have a mystery object. Something for you to look at. It is something very strange. But what is it? What is the mystery object? It is something very weird, very unusual. But what is it? What is today's mystery object? If you think you know what this is, it is something that is very useful at certain times of the year. Or maybe if you have a special event coming up, maybe a super duper birthday or maybe a wedding. So here it is. Today's mystery object. But what is it? What is it? And what is it used for? I will tell you. A little bit later on, if I remember. Hello to Vitas again. Hello. Oh, we have we have Alessandra is here. Hello, Alessandra. Nice to see you here as well. By the way, yesterday we found out what our fate will be concerning the lockdown situation. It would appear that most of the restrictions will be removed by the end of June so it looks as if things will start to get back to normal around June I know it's a long way off but hopefully everything will be back to normal by the end of June so that was announced yesterday I think the schools will be going back next week so about another week and then the schools will start back I think also next month I think shops 
and certain types of businesses will also be reopening so things are slowly starting to get back to normal and the reason why this is happening is well there is a rather successful vaccination program taking place here at the moment in the UK in England of course which is where I am so it is going rather well which is good news it's also good news that the daily rate of infection is also dropping and also something we are always thinking about the fatalities as well but I suppose one thing we can be probably a little bit thankful for is that it isn't as bad as it has been in the USA quite serious situation there so it looks as if by the end of June things here should <laughs> we hope be back to normal I really hope so Alessandra says oh look at you Mr Duncan we still can't see the end of the tunnel well I still think we have a long way to go even here even though there has been a lot of good news over the past few days I still think there is a long way to go I still think we have two months maybe three months of steady improvement and I think that's as far as I can go really so I don't want to get too excited but it would appear that things are not as bad as they were a couple of weeks ago <laughs> Unic Arena hello Mr Duncan do you know the legend of St George and the dragon well that is one of the things well, that is one of the emblems of this country so we do have St George's Day and he is the patron saint of England and the famous story of him slaying the dragon <laughs> you have to be careful when you say that you see you have to make sure that there are there are no dragons nearby because you might actually get into trouble if you say it when there is a dragon nearby so so always be careful when you talk about St George remember do not talk about St George in front of dragons no Mr Duncan you should never talk about St George in front of dragons because we are very sensitive about that you see we are very sensitive I, I'm, I'm quite offended by that to be honest <laughs> oh Unic Arena yes I do know about St George I am very aware of St George I hope everything will be back to normal again hello Mosen nice to see you here as well <laughs> it's great to see you on the live chat so what is the mystery object does anyone know what this is it is very useful if you are planning to have some fun if you want to have a good time this is very good for giving you a lot of fun <laughs> what no it's not that it's not one of those <laughs> but it is something that is very useful if you want to bring a little bit of fun if you want to create some nice atmosphere this is very good for doing it I will give you the answer a little bit later on hello Mr Duncan oh Florence says perhaps the mystery object is something that is used for opening a champagne bottle hmm. yes you might be right there you might be right <laughs> I always thought that I had a sound effect of a champagne bottle opening but I haven't I used to but I don't have it anymore <laughs> how sad is it a candle holder is this a candle holder is it used for holding a candle 
now that is very good I like that idea I like that suggestion can I just say you are very close you are very near in certain ways not exactly you're not exactly correct but you are you are sort of in the right area hmm <laughs> it isn't anything rude the mystery object is not anything rude or dirty or disgusting it is not for those wondering <laughs> definitely not we are talking about insects and I thought it would be nice today to have a look at some insects that we get here in the UK insects that you see in England quite often you will see them during the summertime so it would be fair to say that normally we get most of our common insects during the summertime during the winter you don't see many insects at all to be honest you don't see many whatsoever however during the summer months you will find many insects flying around crawling around buzzing <laughs> and sometimes being very annoying so I thought today we would have a look at some insects that you can find here now last week if you remember mr. Steve was making some pancakes and whilst doing that he was using some flour the first insect that I'm going to show you is an insect that can appear in your flower in your flower so when I say flower I don't mean the flower that grows in the garden I mean the flower that you put in your pastry the flower that you use to make your cakes with so here is the first one by the way I suppose I should say that some of these insects might be a little bit scary as well here's the first one. Oh, oh dear now that looks like a beetle it is something called a weevil <laughs> that is the name of this insect it is called a weevil weevil and this particular insect is often found in flour or in other things such as grain so you will often find this little insect especially if you have left your flour your bag of flour in a place for a very long time maybe a damp place so you can actually get these little insects in your flour your cooking flour your baking flour and if you leave your flour for a long time these weevils will hatch out they will lay their eggs and then later you will have lots of little creepy crawlies little insects moving around inside your bag of flour so that one is a common insect and you can find this one quite often in people's houses for the reasons that I've just mentioned here's another one this is one that we see very often during the summer especially during the height of summer when summer is at its warmest you will often see or hear these particular animals grasshoppers we do have grasshoppers in this country and during the summer months you will see them sometimes but quite often you will hear them you will definitely hear them and sometimes they will come into your house I remember when we first moved here to this house I remember during the first year we, we found lots of grasshoppers in the house and I don't know why <laughs> but there were there were lots of grasshoppers and one of the reasons why we get many grasshoppers around here is because I live in the countryside so you often find grasshoppers in places where there is a lot of grass <laughs> as their name suggests 
we are going to look at some idioms connected with insects in a few moments it is day number 23 of February we are learning English talking about all sorts of subjects and today we are talking about insects here is another one oh now I suppose many people when they think of nature when they think of insects quite often they will think of this lovely creature ladybirds I love ladybirds so much quite often around here we get lots of ladybirds during the summer months flying around sometimes they can be slightly annoying it is true if you get lots of ladybirds they can become slightly annoying in America in the United States they are often referred to as ladybugs ladybugs so in American English you will often hear these described as ladybugs here we call them ladybirds and you will notice on this particular ladybird it has two spots some have four spots some have six so there are many different types of ladybird some of them are yellow some of them are orange there are many different types of this particular insect and they can be annoying sometimes talking of annoying here is another insect that is very annoying <laughs> oh I think of all the things that are annoying about summer besides hay fever must be the house fly flies house flies they are the most annoying insect of all because they come into your house they fly around they land on your food and they are generally a pain in the neck so house flies there are lots of different types of fly but the house fly is a very common one quite often during the summer months they will come into your house and buzz around and they can be a real pain in the neck I do not like house flies I don't like flies at all I don't like any flies <laughs> if I was honest so what about you do you get flies where you are do they come in I know in some countries the flies are really annoying and they can get everywhere a lot of people put special screens on their windows and their doors to stop the flies from coming in I think they call it a fly screen a fly screen is something you put over your door or over your window to stop the flies from coming in because they are so annoying almost as annoying as me here's another one now this is an insect the next insect is one that you often see in the garden and to be honest with you when I was a child the next insect was one that would often fascinate me in fact I loved this particular insect and here it comes now oh mr. Duncan what is that <laughs> it is a wood louse wood louse so as a singular noun we say wood louse as a plural we say wood lice so a wood louse is one wood lice is more than one wood louse wood lice and you often see these in the garden quite often if you move maybe a piece of concrete or maybe an old piece of wood if you lift it up especially when the weather is damp quite often underneath you will find lots of these insects wood louse or wood lice 
with lice and I, I always find them quite fascinating because they are a type of crustacean they have a lovely shell on the outside they are also millions of years old as well they've been around longer than human beings which is <laughs> quite amazing when you think about it quite incredible some years ago I saw on the west coast of France the street was covered with ladybirds it seems that all these insects came from north of Africa you can sometimes get lots of insects coming from certain parts of the world especially when there is a large population of that particular insect so sometimes you will find that you will get lots of insects in one particular place. I was watching the news last night and I was looking at a story about Kenya. Kenya at the moment is suffering a terrible situation where they they cannot get rid of locusts. They are everywhere, everywhere. And some very horrible scenes of people trying to escape huge swarms of locusts yes the wood louse can be lots of different colors you are right it can one of the things that the wood lice or wood louse can do it can roll up into a ball to protect itself like this it goes and then it becomes a ball it means that predators or maybe animals that want to eat the wood lice can't cannot they can't get into it we are looking at different types of animals today namely insects here's a nice one this is a lovely insect i like this one i like it a lot again during the summer months you will see lots of butterflies lots of this particular type of insect here is a particular one called a peacock butterfly this is a very common butterfly here in England so during the summer or maybe even early summer quite often you will see butterflies even though recently over recent years the population of butterflies has actually declined quite a lot we have sadly lost many of our butterflies quite often this is due to farming techniques modern farming has sadly caused the number of butterflies to diminish or drop hmm, which is a shame because there is nothing nicer than the sight of a butterfly fluttering past your window or maybe sometimes if you are lucky you might be able to get very close to a butterfly you will be able to get as close as the person who took this photograph did lovely beautiful insects so some insects can be nice and some insects can be rather annoying I would not describe the butterfly as annoying I would say that the butterfly is a beautiful creature and it always brightens my day whenever I see one okay here is an insect that can be annoying <laughs> it can cause a lot of irritation especially if you get them on your body it is the ant a very simple looking creature and yet a very fascinating creature at the same time I am fascinated by ants I don't know why I, I have a huge fascination for ants unless of course they get into your house if they get into your house they cause all sorts of problems but ants are quite amazing creatures they use lots of very special ways of communicating with each other and they, they have different types of duties 
so you have ants that are workers you have ants that are soldiers and I think the ant is a very interesting creature especially when they are moving or maybe they are building a nest or perhaps they are moving from one place to another you will often see ants marching together <laughs> fascinating creatures I have to be honest with you I remember one one particular time I was with Mr. Steve and we were in Turkey <laughs> and we were going for a, for an evening walk and we went by part of the road and it was very dusty and dirty in this particular area there was lots of dust around but then we noticed that there was a long line of ants and then we realized that there were not a few of them there were thousands of them and so we started following the ants and <laughs> the closer we got the more fascinated we became by them because they were carrying things some of them had leaves they were carrying some of them had pieces of wood some of them were carrying things that I couldn't even recognize I didn't even know what they were but it looks as if or it looked as if they were transporting things to a new nest but there were there were there were so many of them and another thing I noticed when the ants were moving they would go up to each other and they would beep, touch like that they would go up and beep, touch each other and that's because their form of communication uses chemicals so they beep, touch each other as a way of recognizing that they are all from the same nest gulu gulu 10 says ants never give up they never give up no I think most insects are, are very persistent because they have to be for their survival so so actually they have no choice they have no choice in the situation that they have to be persistent they have to keep trying because really when you think about it they have no choice here is another insect now here is one that you might find sometimes in your house sometimes you might find them in your garden and they are very unusual because they are quite hard to find and there is a reason for that <laughs> they are very good at disguising themselves they are very good at camouflaging themselves oh I like that word camouflage if you camouflage yourself it means you cover yourself or you change your color to blend in with the background so you can see that particular insect it is called a green shield bug a green shield bug and that's the name of it and it's very clever because it can go in places such as leaves or along branches and it can disguise itself as part of the tree or part of the plant especially if it's on a leaf as you can see from that photograph so this particular insect is very good at disguising itself it uses camouflage to hide from predators and yes you can find these quite often during the summer months and they will sometimes come in to the house Marietta says I can't stand green shield bugs because of their horrible smell if you touch them that is true yes if you touch one of these insects they will emit a horrible smell to 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 warn you to to <laughs> prevent you from eating them ladybirds also have a defense mechanism have you ever noticed if you sometimes if you, if you pick a ladybird up and put it on your finger sometimes you will see there is a yellow substance that comes out onto your finger and then afterwards 
your finger will have a very strange smell so ladybirds also do the same thing they produce a foul smelling liquid and it's quite disgusting but sometimes if the ladybird is startled or afraid they will also produce some some yellow liquid and the smell is quite horrible and it also tastes bad as well so what the ladybird is doing it is trying to make itself taste bad so the predator will not eat it which I think is pretty clever Sora this type of bug I found it in my garden they are quite common during the summer months as many insects actually are here's another one oh <laughs> you have to be careful how you say this it is a black clock beetle <laughs> mm. beetles you see beetles very often especially when it is wet you will often see beetles scurrying around rushing about quite often if you move something in the garden maybe something big and heavy quite often you will see a beetle it will run for its life as it tries to get away from you so beetles are also very common creatures I always remember when I was little my mother told me that if I ever squashed a beetle if I ever killed a beetle it would start to rain <laughs> That sounds like an old wives tale, Mr. Duncan. Like yesterday when we were talking about them. Here's another thing, another little insect. This is one that can fly. And also quite often you will see this particular insect at night. It is a moth. Moth. So moths are flying insects and quite often you will see them at night fluttering and flying around an area that is lit maybe a street light or maybe a light outside your house you will see moths flying around and one of the problems with moths of course is they have a lot of predators bats and owls really do like eating moths so when they are out at night they are they are very vulnerable to predators bats and also owls love to eat moths very much so there are some common insects that you might find here in England <clears throat> Unicarina is going oh I'm leaving the chat now I can't watch the screen <laughs> Well, the insects have gone now. <laughs> uh, hello to Paulo. Hello, Paulo. Nice to see you here. With some news on the pandemic here in Portugal, the pandemic is not as bad as it was before. That is good. Yes, it would appear that some countries are slowly improving their situation as far as the pandemic and also the infection rate. Many places now are seeing the infection rate start to drop, including here in England, which is a good thing when you think about it. I thought it would be interesting to have a look at some idioms connected to insects. And you might not realize it, but there are lots of insect idioms. And I thought we might have a look at them right now. Would you like to see some idioms connected to insects? OK, and don't forget, I want your guesses about the mystery object. What is the mystery object? If you think you know what it is, I will show you what this is at the end of the live stream. I will also give you a demonstration of what it does. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. Here we go then. Some 
idioms and also some expressions that we can use to describe insects quite often people especially if they are afraid of insects and some people are they might describe an insect as a creepy crawly <laughs> creepy crawly so I suppose this particular description relates to the way an insect moves quite often an insect will move slowly it will creep and crawl I suppose a good example is a spider which I didn't show today because I thought that was nice you see you see how kind I am I didn't show you any spiders <laughs> creepy crawly a creepy crawly is another word for insect quite often used by people who do not like insects at all they don't like them they feel afraid of insects <gasps> oh no I think there is a creepy crawly in my bed bug another word that is often used to describe an insect in American English you might hear the word bug used quite often so bug is another word for insect a bug is any type of insect that crawls or flies or buzzes it is a bug here are two words that look similar but actually have a very different meaning you have the word pest so when we say pest that is something that is annoying something that interferes with your your normal life something that hinders your day something that is annoying pest so this particular word here beep 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 pest something that is annoying however then we have this word here pestilence pestilence relates to viruses uh, or maybe an epidemic of an illness or something that causes a, an outbreak of illness so when we say pestilence we mean maybe a plague maybe an area that is affected by a certain disease pestilence pestilence so a pest is something that's annoying and gets on your nerves like me and then there is pestilence which relates to an illness a plague maybe an area that is affected by a serious disease of some sort we just use the word plague and we will look at the word now plague can also be used to describe an invasion of insects so if lots of insects come into your area if there are many many insects in a certain area we can say that you have a plague of insects maybe a plague of locusts or a plague of flies so quite often we will use the word plague to describe a large number of insects that are invading your area maybe they are also eating all of the crops as well another reason why they are quite annoying so you can have a plague of insects many insects arriving or hatching out at the same time you can have an infestation an infestation of insects it means maybe in your house maybe there are many many ants or maybe there are many cockroaches Ugh. Oh. Ugh. I do not like cockroaches not at all not at all I do not like cockroaches yes spiders do have eight legs that is true 
but quite often they are grouped with other insects I know that they are actually different but quite often people will say spiders when they are talking about insects but yes they are different they are different because insects normally have six legs and spiders have eight thank you very much for that an infestation or swarm there are many 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 insects maybe a certain type of insect flying around or crawling around spreading misery and quite often disease as well an insect invasion so this sounds like something from an old movie <laughs> but it isn't you can have an insect invasion or an invasion of insects so it just means that lots of insects are appearing or moving in a certain area they are causing problems they are affecting people's lives in various ways as I just mentioned an insect invasion here are some idioms quite often used in English to bug someone if you bug someone it means you annoy them you bug someone you are annoying them you are making them feel annoyed by your behavior something you are doing is annoying them you are bugging them oh please stop bugging me I wish you would stop bugging me so to bug someone is an idiom that means to bother or annoy someone you bug them you are bugging that person quit it you are bugging me here's another insect worm worm I'm sure someone is going to say mr. Duncan a worm is not an insect but again quite often we will group them together technically a worm is not an insect <laughs> but <sighs> to worm your way in or out to worm your way in maybe you are trying to join a group of people but they won't let you in they, they keep saying no mr. Duncan we don't want you in our group we don't like you you are very annoying but I will do something so maybe later they will let me join I try to worm my way in so if you worm your way in it means you try to become part of something maybe by doing something nice showing some kindness or maybe bribing them <laughs> please let me join your group please please I'll I'll bring you some chocolate from home if you let me so you are trying to worm your way in to a group and of course you can also worm your way out maybe something you want to avoid maybe something you are trying to get out of doing you try to worm your way out so you can worm your way in and also worm your way out as well here is another one a fly in the ointment as I said earlier flies are very annoying they get everywhere and this particular idiom means something that spoils a nice thing something that comes along and then it spoils a nice moment of time something you are enjoying is suddenly spoilt we can say that that thing the thing that causes the problem is like a fly in the ointment it is a fly in the ointment and the word ointment is normally used to mean something that is used for medical purposes something maybe you put on your skin is ointment something that is medicated is ointment so a fly in the ointment is when something comes along to spoil your fun or your enjoyment or maybe a happy moment something comes along to make it bad it is a fly in the ointment <laughs> you can have ants in your pants 
you you certainly can you can get lots of things in your pants actually that crawl around but in this particular case we are talking about ants <laughs> yeah. oh. you can have ants in your pants this particular idiom means that you are restless you won't stop moving you are fidgeting so if you fidget it means you keep moving you won't stay still you move around quite a lot you won't sit still you won't stand still you keep moving and someone might say oh for goodness sake what's wrong with you <laughs> have you got ants in your pants have you got ants in your pants ants in your pants here's another one <laughs> oh to stir up a hornet's nest hornets are very large flying creatures they look like giant wasps and they can be very dangerous their stings can actually cause quite damaging physical illnesses reactions and even death to stir up a hornet's nest as an idiom means to create a problem maybe a problem that you have created by disturbing or mentioning a certain thing so maybe you mention a certain topic and then lots of people around you start getting angry because of it you might say oh no I seem to have stirred up a hornet's nest I've created a lot of anger suddenly by doing something or saying something not very nice here is another one the bees knees something that is excellent something that is of good quality it is very high class it is very sophisticated something that is excellent very good quality you can say it's the bees knees it is something that is great something to have or something to do something to eat something you enjoy doing the bees knees it's great mm. it's the bees knees here's another one to start dropping like flies this means maybe people are coming becoming ill or becoming sick maybe one after the other people start falling ill so you might say that during the past 12 months many people have been dropping like flies so it can be used in a jovial or light-hearted way but sometimes you have to be careful when you use this so sometimes if you use this you might appear to be insensitive to start dropping like flies it means lots of people are being affected by something normally an illness of some sort they are dropping like flies we have two more oh when you go to bed at night you climb into your bed and you feel so comfortable you feel so relaxed you feel as snug as a bug in a rug as snug as a bug in a rug very nice finally to be a fly on the wall maybe you are listening to a person's conversation secretly maybe they don't realize that you can hear what is going on you are listening in you are eavesdropping you are like a fly on the wall mm. and that is it that is the final one i hope you've enjoyed those idioms and also i hope my insect collection wasn't too scary i will be going in a moment finally before i go oh yes tomek tomek that is very good yes bug can also mean to plant 
a listening device in someone's room or maybe near to people who are having a conversation a private conversation that is recorded secretly you often use a bug it is a small device that you put maybe in a room or maybe near a group of people who are having a private conversation you are right we can also use it as a verb to bug an office to bug the workplace to bug a person's house you put something in there so you can listen to what they're saying in private I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream please give me a lovely thumbs up as well can you please give me a thumb a big thumbs up and that would be ever so nice before I go we also have <laughs> the mystery object I said this is something that can bring a lot of fun a lot of cheer and delight especially if you are having a party oh so I'm now going to show you what this is so imagine if you are going to a disco and something you will often see in a disco is one of these a mirror ball and this particular item is designed to turn your mirror ball around so you can enjoy the music I will try to put it on <laughs> there we go so there it is and then you will switch the device on and then the ball will start to turn around like that yeah It is a motor for making your mirror ball spin round whilst you're having your dance party or your disco and that is what this is for so it is a small motor that will turn <laughs> your mirror ball around quite often you will see these in discos you will shine a very bright light onto a mirror ball and then the reflections will cast a wonderful sparkly glow around the room as it turns around so that's what today's mystery object is it is a motor for turning around your mirror ball and that's it it is time to go <laughs> I feel like dancing now to be honest because you know we had the mirror ball I want to have some disco music I really do but we can't because it's time to go I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream I am slightly over time but not to worry I will be back with you tomorrow yes tomorrow I am with you again and it is Wednesday tomorrow halfway through the week I hope you will join me then this is Mr. Duncan in England saying thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope my insects were not too scary. And I will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. UK time for more of this. Thank you very much, Rosa, Beatrice. Thank you, Belarusia. Don't worry, you can watch this later. If you've missed this, if you've missed all of this, don't worry, you can watch it again later. And later on, there will be captions as well. Later today, there will be more videos and also some captions as well, because I will save this for you to watch again. And of course, until the next time we meet here, on YouTube, whenever it may be. <sighs>
from mr duncan that's me by the way to you and also <laughs> mr dragon thank you very much for watching today and of course <laughs> ta-ta for now <laughs>